mailbag time. Got a bunch of stuff from DigiKey. I don't know what's in there. I don't know what's on these. Guess we'll find out. Stick around. Don't forget to put links down below for things I can give you links for. Just make sure you check those out. Nice little case. It's a mechanic USB tester. So you can plug in different cables and test them to make sure they work properly. Sorts of things you should have in your arsenal for things you need to check for. Like you know, it's got a lightning port tester, lightning to USB, power in. Also got USB A there. Nice. And it gives you some data line information. Basics tester, but cool. So if you've got a cable you're not quite sure if it's any good or not, you can plug it in, see if it goes. It may not be comprehensive, but it gives you some kind of idea. This wasn't even that expensive. I had someone comment on a video the other day about my ram knife. People seem to think that the ram knife is wrong. I don't know why. Okay, if I did what I just did with that, with a normal knife, I would cut right into that box. Now, it's just nothing, right? Nothing. No damage. So why I use a ram knife? It doesn't damage what's inside it. I've got a really nice camera bag, and when I opened that, I was still using this to open packages, and I put a big cut down the side of the fabric, so it's got a big cut in the fabric on the outer casing. You know, if I'd use a ram knife, that wouldn't happen, which is why I use this if I can. So it's a 3D printer thing. It's a main board. It's the 4.27 main board. This is for my Ender 3v2. I've currently got a 4.22 in there. I think I'll upgrade it. You know, this board's pretty cheap, it's like 30 bucks, so it doesn't cost much at all. Really cheap. And it's not a big upgrade. And 422 is known to have issues. So I thought I'd go to a 427. I could have got like a Big Tree Tech one or some other brand and actually had a heavy duty main board, I suppose. But I want to keep it relatively stock. So I just got the newer version of this. And I should just be, you know, drop in a replacement. It's nice and easy. So I'll be doing that later on. I won't bother doing a video. Not much point. Just try and improve my printing results on that printer. But having some issues with it recently. And the other thing is in there. Are some terminals. There's some spades which actually split off, so you got like a female, which then goes to two males. So you can hook up. There you go. See that? So if you need to split off a single connection, you can do that. So it means you've got a male pin already. You can put this onto that pin and gain two male pins instead. That way you can run two wires to one device without having to splice wiring. It's a nice tidy solution, and you can always heat shrink them and stuff like that as well if you need to put insulation on. Handy things to have. It's another Creality box. Looks like it's been opened already. Do you think that's been opened already? Look at that. That sticker. What do you think? Do you think it just looks wrong. It probably doesn't matter. So this is... The Sprite Pro. This is a direct drive extruder for the Ender 3 V2. Well, other Ender 3s. I'll be thinking about doing this upgrade for a while, and I've finally decided to do it. And I've no real demand for it. I just think it'd be a nice thing to have a play with. I haven't tried direct drive yet. Yeah, direct drive. It's pretty heavy, so it's probably going to result me having to use slower speeds, a bit of weight to it. But it should be a pretty much a straight on replacement. Got a cable, we've got a new carriage, and we've got nozzle and some bolts. So I got this directly from Creality because at least then you know you're getting exactly the right part and you're not worried about some third party thing which may not be quite the same simplicity in this edition. So anyway, um, comes with a loom as well. So it's plugged straight on the main board. So when I replace that main board I will drop this straight on as well I think at the same time. There's a bit of a story about this too and you may or may not get to it in this video, we'll see. Is it worth doing? I don't know. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. There's pros and cons to using direct drive. I think the biggest con is that the extra weight you get, this is pretty heavy. So you're adding a lot of weight to it. But I think one of the pros is that you get much better filament control. It's worth a try. It could be a mistake, I don't know. But yeah, I'll let you know. Maybe I'll do a video, I don't know. It does look like the company I buy this from has finally learnt I think they finally figured it out. For ages I had issues with anything I bought from this company, there'd be some kind of padding in it, whatever's in it, 
but it always be the product on the bottom and the padding on top. But they seem to have started sorting it out now. The items padded, top and bottom. They won't ship me a hard drive in a box, on the bottom of the box, not wrapped in anything, just with one or two airbags, I think it's two airbags shoved on top of it to fill the gap in the top of the box. That was it, no protection whatsoever. Unsurprisingly, the hard drive didn't work. PB Tech. So I think they've probably sorted it out now. I think, I mean, I'll complain about it and go feedback and emailed them, which I never got a response about. Did reviews as well, saying about the packaging. You know, when you order stuff online, they don't pack it well. Go and pick it up if it's fragile. <laughs> anyway, this is a HDMI to HDMI mini cable. Now, I've shown this before, or well, one of these sort of things before. I actually use this on this camera. I seem to have a bit of bad luck with these cables. I don't know what it is about them, but they, they fail. I don't know why. It just sits here on my camera, barely even moving. And they actually fail within the cable itself, not the plug, the cable. A bit weird. So the one I'm using right now is working at the moment, but the other day I couldn't get it working at all. And uh, anyway, so I've got another cable for it. Although right now I'm actually looking at changing the camera as well. I'm seriously considering going to a proper camcorder. I'm currently using a Canon EOS 750D, which I've been using this for many years now. I don't know, what, five, six years, something like that. I've been using that to do my videos. Same camera, and it's not ideal. It's not completely perfect, but it does okay, I think. But I'm looking at doing a proper camcorder now. So, but it's, I'm looking at like two and a half thousand dollars to replace this camera. Big investment, and and YouTube doesn't pay that well. <laughs> so, and the money I do make on YouTube goes back into it to buy test equipment, things like that. So, if you want to help support the channel, I'd appreciate if you either do give me a thanks down there, like it's, you know, one off thanks thing down there, you can become a YouTube member, or you can become a Patreon supporter, which is also linked down below and at the end of the video about there somewhere. If you want to do that, it's great because. Patreon supporters really helped me over a long period of time. It's not much money, it's, you know, it's a couple of dollars a month, potentially. It's could be all you donating, it's $2 a month minimum. That's the lowest you can do. Or you could do much more than that if you choose to. And that's really helpful. It's a big help for me to buy things and make my video content. That's why I'm doing it, right? All that money goes back into the channel. I don't make anything from it. In fact, I'm subsidising the channel with my own income. So it's actually costing money to run the channel. So, anyway... I've said this many, many times. People who've been around for a while would have heard this previously. But if you're relatively new, you probably haven't heard that. This is DigiKey box. Oh, normally I should say, hey, do you know where this is from? But, you know, put it down in the comments, that sort of thing. You, know. you can still do it if you want. <laughs> do you feel like you're missing out? By all means, go and put it in the comments. Do you want to guess? <laughs> this is quite a big order as well. Now, this is, I'll say about how much money I've been spending. Um, I want to spend $2,500 on a new camera. This box was four hundred dollars. Yeah, it's an awful lot of paper. You get there eventually. So what I've got in here is a whole bunch of capacitors. I was stocking up a whole bunch of radial capacitors, which I needed, and some axials. These I got because I saw these featured on I'm Side Guy. He got these, and coincidentally, I actually saw that Adrian still the basement. Adrian. He was looking for these as well to convert SIP memory modules into SIP memory modules for some of his older computers. I'm so glad I had these on his channel. I thought, ah, great. That's perfect. Because I would actually like to have some of these too. And then also let Adrian know about these so he can get some of these himself to use when he's doing those old conversions. Um, he's been wanting to do that for a while. I think he's actually been resorting to changing the socket on the motherboard rather than adding pins onto the RAM. You wouldn't believe it, but there's 500 in there. Oh no, it's 376 on there. There should be some more. I'm supposed to get in 500. Where's the rest? There you go. There's the rest. 124. There we go. <laughs> that's more like it. And that's what it look like up close. So he's got like a, a rail that's on, which will break it off. So it's got like these little fingers on there. So it's probably a bit hard to see through the bag. See those little fingers in there? So that goes around the edge of a circuit board. And then you solder it on. And then you can break off these two sides to just leave with the pins. And also in here, there should be some ICs. What we got here? Uh, 74LS38N, 74LS02N, 
7 4 LSO 5 n 7 4 HC TO 3 E uh, 7 4 LSO 3 n this is the one I really need and 7 4 LS 74 AN also needed one of these two so these two here are replacement parts for in in the oscilloscope I'm currently working on. I'm working on a HP 1740A. I'm trying some problems back to digital circuitry, and it involves replacing these two chips. A video about that will be out, so watch out for that coming out too. Mostly capacitors. That's mostly what's in here is capacitors. So this box is $400 worth of my money. Like I said, YouTube doesn't pay enough. So, other videos to watch down below, especially repair stuff, which would be some of these parts getting used. And also, as I was saying before, you can subscribe here. If you want to help me as well, not just financially, you can also just like put a comment down below. Leave a comment, and that actually helps the channel. It helps it to grow a little bit. And sharing the videos, if you, if you see something here you like and you think other people might be interested in, share it, because that also helps my channel to grow, which is also beneficial. Growth on YouTube can be very slow for niche channels like mine. My channel is very much a niche channel, and so growth is slow. If you're doing something more mainstream, more mainstream electronics, maybe growth will be much faster. Or educational kind of stuff, maybe it's a bit faster that way too. But yeah, for me, growth is slow. Patreon support link up there. If you want to help financially support the channel, give me a couple of dollars a month. If enough people gave me two dollars a month, I could give up work eventually. Not likely to ever happen, but hey, I can dream. Get started.